I lost a lot of hairs in that take. <laughs> <laughs> Those kind of things, I mean, you just do them. You know, it's not always the most comfortable thing. That was quite hilarious for me because it was, one, it was one of the first days of filming. So the cast and crew got to know me very intimately, yeah. very quickly. But what was funny about that take is all the crew are facing me uh, and looking away and trying to be respectful and whatnot. I'm facing the fire and the camera. Behind the camera is a fence and this neighbor walked out midway through the, the take and just stared at me while I was naked, burning clothes. And I stared at him and that went on for way too long. And then he put his recycling in, went back inside <laughs> and, and then the take ended and none of the crew were aware, it was just, he and I had that moment. So that was quite a funny uh, I don't know, icebreaker. Moment. Yeah, yep. yeah. But um, hopefully you can't tell from the, the scene. I haven't seen it yet. But <laughs> Real life John uh, has this uh, unbelievable scar, which basically, funnily enough, is in kind of a cross shape across his stomach. So he was uh, gutted on the street um, when he was in his teens. Um, and we, even though, you know, it's a fictionalized drama. We used parts like that and and put that into the series. And so for adult John, which I play, um, the scar has obviously healed a lot more than when you see the teenage um, John played by Malik Alconi. Um, and it was really fun because we, for me, it was my first time experiencing prosthetics. So it was it was about two hours each morning if I had to um, have my shirt off or the scar had to be revealed or, or whatever. And it was a lot of fun at the start and it looks unbelievable, but I can't do much. I can't sit down because otherwise it'll tear the prosthetic. So it was good in theory. Uh, in practicality, I was quite, I was kind of doing this a lot. If I like wanted to sit down, I'd have to sit like this, um, but it's worth it. I, I think it looks really great. So the show kind of talks about the, the 70s, 80s and 90s in The Cross. Um, it goes into the lives of John and Sam Ibrahim uh, from when they were in Tripoli, uh, escaping the Civil War, to when they get to Australia. And it goes from being poor immigrants with, with nothing to their name, no assets, no kind of mark uh, on this country, to uh, John owning the cross uh, and taking over the strip. Some of them are real people, but um, we were really encouraged to kind of follow our, uh, our own instincts as actors and given the license to kind of put our spin on things. Um, yeah, which we did and it was great because uh, we didn't have to have um, so much of a burden uh, of, you know, um, replicating things to the nth degree, but really just following our intuition, trying to capture the essence of the era and that world. It was incredibly important that this show is multicultural, diverse uh, in, in the number of different ways it is, because what we're representing, which is this iconic strip uh, in Sydney, it had all walks of life and it accepted all and judged none. I know for me, it was really important that there is this kind of Lebanese story being told on Australian screens um, because a lot of the times there's stereotypes um, in when it comes to Lebanese culture uh, and to actually have a dramatised um, retelling of, of something that is iconic in Australian history that some people know peripherally but they don't know the magic that actually went on and and what uh, an expansive story it was i think it's it's really important that we we have that both here but also overseas